നമസ്കാരം ശരത്കാലം പരിപാടിയിലേക്ക് ഹൃദയമായ സ്വാഗതം ഐക്യ കേരളം വികസന കേരളം ഐക്യ കേരളം ആഗോള കേരളം എന്ന ആശയം മുൻനിർത്തി കേരളത്തിന് അടിമുടി മാറ്റത്തിന് അപൂർവ പദ്ധതികൾ തയ്യാറാക്കുന്ന ഒരു പദ്ധതിയാണ് ശരക്കാലം പരിപാടി കൊണ്ട് ലക്ഷ്യമിടുന്നത് ലോകത്തിന്റെ വിവിധ ഭാഗങ്ങളിൽ വലിയ നേട്ടങ്ങൾ കൊയ്ത് വലിയ നേട്ടങ്ങൾക്ക് നേതൃത്വം നൽകുന്ന മലയാളികളെ പരിചയപ്പെടുത്തുന്ന ഒരു തുറന്ന ചർച്ചയ്ക്ക് വേദി ഒരുക്കുക ഒരു വാതിൽ തുറക്കുക എന്ന ലക്ഷ്യമാണ് ശരക്കാലം പരിപാടി കൊണ്ട് ലക്ഷ്യമിടുന്നത് ആഗോള കേരളം എന്ന ആശയം യാഥാർത്ഥ്യമാക്കുകയാണ് ഈ പരിപാടിയുടെ ലക്ഷ്യം ശരക്കാലം പരിപാടിയുടെ ഇന്നത്തെ അതിഥി ഡോക്ടർ ശങ്കരനാണ് ഡോക്ടർ ശങ്കരൻ നമുക്കറിയുന്നത് പോലെ ഇന്ത്യയിലെ പ്രശസ്തമായ വിദ്യാഭ്യാസ സ്ഥാപനത്തിന്റെ മേധാവിയാണ് ഡോക്ടർ ശങ്കരൻ സാറിന് സ്വാഗതം നമസ്കാരം നമസ്കാരം സാർ സാറിന്റെ കഴിഞ്ഞ കാല ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഒരുപാട് അനുഭവങ്ങൾ അദ്ദേഹത്തിനുണ്ട് സാറിനുണ്ട് സാറിന്റെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഈ കഴിഞ്ഞ കാലഘട്ടത്തിൽ നിരവധി ദേശങ്ങളിൽ വസിക്കുകയും ആ ദേശങ്ങളിലെ അനുഭവം എങ്ങനെ കേരളത്തിന്റെ വികസനത്തിന് ഉതകും വീതം മുന്നോട്ട് കൊണ്ടുപോകാനാകും എന്നൊരു കാഴ്ചപ്പാട് ഒന്ന് വ്യക്തമാക്കാമോ കേരളത്തിൽ ശരിക്കും നോക്കിച്ചാല് എന്റെ അഭിപ്രായത്തില് സോ മച്ച് ടാലന്റ് അത് എല്ലാ ഹോൾ ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ ഇറ്റ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ട്രൂ ആക്ച്വലി സോ മച്ച് ഓഫ് ടാലന്റ് ഇസ് ദേ ആൻഡ് ഹൗ എവർ വി ആർ നോട്ട് ഏബിൾ ടു മാർഷൽ ദ ടുഗെദർ അൺലെസ് വി ആർ ഏബിൾ ടു ഡു ദാറ്റ് വി വിൽ നോട്ട് ബി ഏബിൾ ടു അച്ചീവ് ദ പൊട്ടൻഷ്യൽ ദാറ്റ് ഈച്ച് individual uh, has now it, this has become very clear actually when i deal with people outside the country yan united states in hong kong vare yan programs le padipichana management program le padipichunde in every one of those classes uh, and when compared with india india le yan valra adhigam karam yan padipichunde i i've noticed that uh, what uh, we have in terms of uh, the individual ability to be situationally alive if i may call that the ability to be actually exercising what in hindi would call jugaad and i'm saying it in a good sense that is going beyond the standard operating procedure and doing things uh, i think that ability is highest in the uh, indian continent uh, indian subcontinent uh, i would say uh, i have uh, taught also people from neighboring countries too and they have a uh, same kind of approach as indians in general now sometimes this is also a disadvantage this is a disadvantage because we are not really good in following the steps as such uh, as a as a as a as a, as a professor mm-hmm. I, i was in also acad- in, in industry too whether it's mm-hmm. industry or in academia uh, we are not exactly great people to follow the uh, mm-hmm. steps as such we want to jump uh, Mm-hmm. the final answer in some ways that's a strength and in some ways it's also not a strength now if it has to be a strength if it has to be marshal the strength we will do best if you are able to do things together mm-hmm. because uh, different people with different temperaments can button and say that okay this should be done that should be done but that requires a great ecosystem mm-hmm. because if we don't have an ecosystem we will be stopping people from coming in and you know suggesting their uh, su- uh, uh, the solutions of suggesting methods of uh, solving problems mm-hmm. so what i have observed very keenly and actually i am a student of organizations and uh, mm-hmm. i i think uh, uh, individual merit is not enough mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we have seen this even in our uh, you know if you see our colonial past uh, the first uh, great company when i say great effectiveness is what i am trying to say the most effective institution or uh, organization let's say that was uh, created not culturally but through a process of design of organizations mm-hmm. or inter organizational systems is actually the great uh, the is, is the east india company mm-hmm. now viewed from a british perspective it was the most effective kind of form of uh, uh, organization from our perspective mm-hmm. that effectiveness was used to colonize us and obviously we got the wrong end of the stick so what i'm trying to say is that in that respect if we can really come up with organizations that are really really flexible enough to bring in this uh, jugaad ethos which has to be decentered which has to be really an ecology of uh, openness and that's what we find in some indian organizations and cultural creations um actually i have i'm a student of management but then i can 
pretty much talk and observe culture as all of us would do and we find there are so many emergent things that are mm-hmm. there in our culture i understand that some of this uh, dance forms that we have in india during that years of preparation there's a lot of importance given to you know sticking to the standard operating procedure what the mm-hmm. guru says is everything uh, mm-hmm. which is true of course in the west end you know when i say india I, i'm kind of saying it is pre industrial situation for the west also you know because of science and industrialization technology and science we have moved a long way uh, from you know recognize these uh, uh, local innovations because big science projects require very very strict standard operating procedure to be followed otherwise it's dangerous mission so if it is a steel plant uh, you know where you're dealing with uh, uh, 800 900 1000 degrees uh, uh, celsius uh, material we better follow the Mm-hmm. standard operating procedures but when it is comes to culture we have a lot of uh, uh, flexibility so uh, coming back to this idea of uh, dance forms there a lot of flexibility once it's learned to make improvisation same with same with music and uh, same with uh, a lot of other things where you know okay. situational uh, uh, smartness or contextuality is very important so what i'm trying to say is that we can create new forms of organizations for that we have to be very very creative just like how we can be creative in bringing out new products and you know the startups and so on we need to be creative in bringing out new organizations so if you can give the controls of such a institution or uh, organization and if you have the buy in from the regulatory authorities and uh, if you can train people up you know so that you know we know when we you know we, we miss the bus if, when we don't follow the things uh, as per the mission statement so we we must have very strong sense of mission of what we are achieving if it's going to be any organization it has to be multi stakeholder oriented and we should know exactly what each person is supposed to be uh, you know what what are the limits within within which the person can operate if that is there i think organizations will come alive and all the bureaucratic problem that we face and the rigidities we face all this will disappear because we will become artists actually and we will become scientific artists if i may um, uh, even the word science and art can be used together in, in the indian context because we we tend to combine all these things we don't have you know clear demarcation between means and ends or why and what and so on. so my suggestion is that we should come with some very very interesting bottom up uh, organizations um, and the creativity of everybody everybody no matter what the qualifications or qualifications don't matter ultimately it's it's about the human spirit of inquiry laid out in a in in a on a canvas of uh, you know artistic uh, uh, pluralism ecology of uh, pluralism and if you can do that uh, we will be really well off and this aspect is not actually given any importance because uh, maybe it's a colonial burden we give so much importance to power and uh, uh, and uh, resources uh, money uh, and that we forget uh, this uh, deeper uh, ecological or uh, spiritual or, or uh, you know inner inner calling of uh, you know collectivism now that collectivism is not something based on ideology but it is uh, based on you know what each person can contribute so if you can create that it will be very nice and i think uh, we don't have such organization they probably they're just beginning to get formed and mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know i'm very very bullish about uh, form of producer organizations mm-hmm. where you know the best of the cooperative uh, systems with governance in place where you mm-hmm. know penetration by uh, uh, unintended people with uh, vested interest uh, cannot be done uh, that's what i have understood as you i hope it stays like that uh, i've studied it uh, somewhat uh, in some detail but not in the entire detail it'll take time before we can really figure out uh, how effective uh, they are mm-hmm. Uh, so that is my submission and i think we should we should really think in terms of you know uh, putting ulta uh, you know uh, upside down uh, current organizations uh, whereby uh, followers will become the youngsters for instance can do reverse mentoring there will be situational leadership by uh, by such people people with gray hair will become you know followers that doesn't mean that you are disrespecting and uh, i think uh, if you if you go to pre industrial uh, situations uh, we find uh, these things were highly practiced uh, you know where, where merit uh, and situational needs would be met by 
whatever expertise, uh, whether of the heart or the head, um, that it can be met. So I'm, I, I learn a lot from my students. And so I, I'm in academia for this reason. And I'm, I, I absolutely enjoy being with the youngsters. And I enjoy being with, you know, wise, older men and, uh, you know, uh, um, older people, uh, so to say. Um, but then we, the older people have to bring in wisdom and youngsters have to bring in the energy and, and can do it attitude. So that's, that's all I want to say. Thank you for this opportunity again. I think there's tremendous potential in what uh, this group is doing. And I'm, I'm committed to giving any kind of, you know, whatever kind of help I can give and whatever way to learn. Uh, I think learning is the best way to contribute uh, because it's, it's just two way. So I'd be very happy to learn from all of you. And I'm absolutely you know, kind of thrilled to be on this platform. Thank you. So we might have a conflict with uh, our existing traditional universities and uh, the legislative uh, side. Correct. So how uh, we will overcome all that uh, problems? Uh, th th yeah, this is, this, is, this is a very Herculean task, actually. Kind of overnight, we cannot change the things. What happened was, uh, I'm fond of saying this, and I have a lot of friends abroad, and you know, I have no, actually, I don't have any anger towards uh, uh, people <laughs> who colonized us because it's over. <laughs> and, uh, but if we have to sit down with a cool head and analyze what really happened and what is really happening. So we find that I, I've been a student of uh, governance in higher education the last few years after I found uh, how two completely different worlds exist or several different worlds exist in our country and mm -hmm. we don't know they exist like that because they are extremely well funded by Indian standards, extremely well funded uh, institutions of government uh, which, uh, uh, which enjoy a certain autonomy while there are the universities which are actually absolutely, absolutely um, uh, behind in terms of you know, what can be done. So if our students and our, our children will become creative only we, when, when we allow them to be creative. Mm -hmm. So that requires exercise of creativity at the very, very local level. So, mm -hmm. you know, institutions cannot be governed by regulations. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it can only be governed. I mean, I'm saying educational institutions, especially higher education, because not because school doesn't need it. School mm -hmm. needs a, a different kind of, you know, emotional tone for teachers. Um, mm -hmm. While at the same time, uh, the, the, the raw energy has to be kind of you know, directed towards uh, right uh, uh, through the right channel. But mm -hmm. what you're doing is at the age of 18 or 17, uh, there is a change that happens uh, biologically uh, in boys and girls, mm -hmm. and especially boys at that stage and possibly girls a little earlier. I've read about this. Uh, I'm also, you know, I've read a lot about uh, uh, the psychology. Uh, mm -hmm. So at the age, at that age, they become a bit uh, rebellious, and, mm -hmm. and they want to explore different things. That's why in uh, developed countries, and also probably in traditions, uh, we, we have to study this. I, 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 don't, I don't know what really used to happen, you know, hundreds of years ago in traditional cultures, but certainly in these developing countries, what they're saying is, you come into the into the thirteenth year of education, you have all the freedoms to take whatever courses you want to take. In three years, you can't make a person an expert. So three or four years undergraduate education is to just feel this freedom, but feel this freedom with your responsibility to get good grades in your exams. So you can go take music, you can take uh, law, you can take management, you take mathematics, you take physics, whatever, and uh, check it out. And I know somebody who wrote, uh, he, 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 I, I was in personal contact with him on email. Uh, his daughter wanted to uh, become a, a somebody who heals, so to say. So she wanted to become a doctor. But during the undergraduate time, though she was an excellent student, she discovered that her approach is better towards animals. So she became a veterinarian, uh, a veterinary doctor, uh, because she, she said uh, people know too much and uh, there's no freedom to kind of do things which the way she thought it should be done. You know? And uh, um, the, the kind of care she could give to animals was uh, was uh, so much more and uh, she became a uh, veterinary uh, 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 doctor 
Uh, what I'm trying to say is, do you, this is the time when uh, we cannot expect youngsters to contribute to society at that time. You know. What we need to do, they should continue their play. The, you know, the the the, the plays, the, the the kind of you know uh, uh, sports, and you know they should they should play intellectually also with what they can do and create their own path. That's why we should have you know choice-based credit system and so on and so forth, which. Uh, uh, sometimes people attribute it to, to 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 resources. We don't have resources. It's not a problem of resources. Our hard resources are as good as uh, uh, you know. I, I think almost anywhere else. Uh, I think you know in terms of classroom and you know. Uh, it, it, I, I've seen some you know really really uh, great classes happening and not so great uh, classroom. We think you know West everything is um, you know hunky dory. It's not so. We may do with what is available, and people may be, you know, close, to, sitting very close to each other, and you know, cram classes and all. So we have a lot of hardware. We have an enormous amount of uh, investment that has gone into hardware and uh, measuring rooms, regulatory requirements, all that. Now that is changing, and so I don't want to say anything because the new uh, national education policy is looking at all these things. So it's not a question of resources. Also, you know, yes, engineering and uh, medical school and all require. But I've seen very, very important medical uh, pro professors, very, very well-known doctors in our country saying that you don't require this kind of uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, so it, it was very heartening to listen to a very, very wonderful person from Bangalore who is very well-known. I think he's Padma Shri or Padma Bhushan. Um, um, we had invited to our institute also um, uh, for one of the convocations. Uh, in fact, it's uh, uh, Dr. Devi Shetty. So he says, uh, you know, we don't have, we don't require so much of resources, uh, which is so true actually in management. It's ultimately intangible needs to be sensed. Intangible uh, thing called, uh, uh, you know, brain power needs to be sensed, and that is an emotional, cognitive thing. It's not just cognitive and intellectual. That you know, people call it elitism. It causes you know everybody should be on board, and different people have different skills. Some people have skills in music. Some people, so we need to, we need to marshal all this. So, so this undergraduate education, for instance, this is just one of the things I'm saying. So we just treat our students at 18, 19, 20 as if they are you know kindergarten children, and parents are also responsible for this to a great extent. It reinforces you know mutually. Uh, but the, so we need to change all these. But all this requires, you know, a great leadership from educationists at all levels, uh, um, and uh, to exercise the kind of good freedoms and to follow governance, we need to have a regulatory system that is not looking at these uh, minor, small, micromanagement things, but they should look at the big picture and look at conflict of interest issues. You know, they can use artificial intelligence, for instance, to see that you know these things. You know, there's no conflict of interest. There can be blockchain that can be used by universities to actually uh, make sure that everything is, you know, in 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 place. Uh, accreditation. I, I've been involved in international accreditations. Over there, the process is given most important. So first thing they ask you, what is your mission? What is your mission? Is your mission to develop the local area, or is your mission to attract foreign students? But we don't have such, you know, strategic approach. There's no strategic approach. We just do things because somebody else is doing, and we copy. Now that is a typical problem with our system. This was not the thing when we used to weave our own fantastic cloth, or our cities used to be, you know, you know, they've all been converted to just, you know, catering to this mass production kind of a thing. So part of that is also this mass production of people, and it need not be so. We can have large classes and yet have that, you know, touch of uh, uh, of care uh, and personalization. And students don't require all that, all your time. All that they need is the freedoms to breathe and they grow themselves and nature is like that. So I'm, I'm beginning to understand how nature works and that's the greatest teacher for us. So yes, so your, your question about uh, whether we can do things, we need to completely change our paradigm. We have to start saying that uh, education is a social process. Peer pressure can make or break students. And uh, the, the, the ecology we create, the kind of inter-individual relationship that we create in the university between faculty and between staff, between the bureaucracy uh, that exists in university, all that have a great impact on the growth of the child or the, or the youngster out there. So we have to first be truly, truly knowledge keepers rather than power keepers, if I may. 
uh, and, and uh, become you know true truly truly keep all the emotions everything aside and then come into the classroom with a sense of what knowledge can do when we are cheerful our students will automatically be cheerful for us to be cheerful the organization has to be cheerful that requires the, these regulatory do this do this do this has to go out and we have to use our own internal you know energy and inspiration to do the right things and be very 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 you know uh, outcome oriented so that uh, you know we, we are not just talking but we, we achieve what we are supposed to do whether it's marketing or whether it's uh, you know, sustainability, economic sustainability, and so on. Thank so you. So, yeah. we have some examples like Kerala Kalamandala in Kerala. Okay. Correct. Uh, you might have uh, heard about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yes. This is a great example. Yes. In uh, Kerala Kalamandala, huh. uh, state syllabus on the beginning of Okay. Uh, and we have Santhinikathan uh, also. Correct. Correct. In, uh, in West Bengal. The okay. same uh, Ralph Mitya Solar pattern on. എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ്സ് <laughs> education uh, whether it's medicine engineering management is not exactly a profession we don't as you know unlike uh, uh, accounting management doesn't have to have one way to do everything like standard operating procedure is not so important otherwise you know one can be hauled to the court and so on. so um, uh, professional uh, programs and quasi professional programs got mm. maximum importance in our country mm. so we gave culture and our own in ability to Uh, find our ways of doing things into at the individual level was given least amount of importance i think okay. so even our economic policies there's so much dependence on this budget with mm -hmm. due respect to budget uh, makers i'm not sure how a percentage difference in uh, um, in, in income uh, income tax mm -hmm. or, or a small percentage difference in import duty is going to change the the, the country Uh, so even mm -hmm. of the series of such changes except that there is a mm -hmm. the, 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 there is a allocative uh, uh, you know uh, um, difference and it will have some impact on some industries but it is not strategic mm -hmm. enough it's still mm -hmm. operational i mean we, mm -hmm. we we learn about this in management all the time finance mm -hmm. is just a great function but it's a feedback function feedback mm -hmm. is more important How, am i doing well is more important than the allocation um, mm -hmm. to, to to different sectors so it, it, uh, to me finance is really a great uh, feedback mechanism to know whether mm -hmm. we are doing justice to the people who bring in the money that is the shareholders in the case of uh, corporate organizations similarly mm -hmm. in the case of uh, national uh, uh, according to me uh, it should be in public finance also money is how well have you used it how well have these uh, 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 these things been uh, uh, have impacted that mm -hmm. measurement and feedback is more important then the plain allocative process plain allocative process comes from a sense of superiority of the okay. person who holds the money mm -hmm. uh, and that doesn't help at all because there mm -hmm. are so many things that have to happen the ultimately the energy from within of all the citizens or, you know the organizational members it has to be brought out that requires mm -hmm. a really really a different kind of approach where we say okay this is what we are good we are inspired we have been inspired by mahatma gandhi we are inspired by you know great teachers nelson mandela now these mm -hmm. are on they are beyond budget so i think i think budget should not be given that much you know uh, what should i say uh, overriding uh, kind of sense that will make us lazy according to me it's like father saying i'll give you so much money son i'll give so much money uh, you are weak so i'll give you money Uh, so you stay at home he'll become even more weaker so mm. i i believe money has to be used as a feedback mechanism to know whether we have used it properly in the most uh, you know ethical way possible uh, without uh, you know favors based on extraneous considerations so that's mm. where i think we have to change a lot uh, mm. and innovations will come uh, in every field only through a process of thinking through these things like in accounting for instance activity based costing 
uh, there was a lot of new things that are emerging. But are we doing any of those things in our country? The due respects to all our professors, all our, uh, including me, are we, are we, are we, you know, uh, heralding a new change, uh, strategic change? Uh, that uh, we'll have to look at things. So I, I think, uh, yeah. So that's that's what I think. Uh, that's my answer. Am I, have I answered your question? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Namade, uh, huh. Serum Institute of India. Huh. Sir Institute of India, hmm. Sargat Gimelo. Now, in Corona Kalan, huh. uh, Kendra Sargat, Government of India, Narthirigan, Kendra Sar, Government of India, Narthirigan, experiments. Hmm. Corona vaccine development, I bend the better experiments. Uh, but in India, almost a thousand of institutions and universities are there in India. Sorry. But uh, we have to collaborate with uh, another university, uh, um, uh, Oxford University, I think. Correct, correct. Oxford. Uh -huh. It is Tamar and Amak in the Lund, but Namakipurum or collaboration with us at a dependent. Correct. It, uh, uh, now I see I'll connect it to the previous question about Kalamandala and Shanti. Namla e professions and importance over the we did not understand how to infuse professions with the humanities ideas. I can talk about management subject. If, if, if a manager is there who is doing an allocative process, a finance function, let's say, mm. allocative process, or he's doing an operations management where a certain standard operating procedures have to be implemented. SOP is another operations manager in the operations, let's say it's a factory operation. Okay. But this operations manager's mind has to understand the behavior of people. Mm -hmm. Those behavior of people includes a rich understanding of the feedback mechanisms that are happening. If I do this, mm. He is not an automatic machine, but he is going to react in a certain way back. Maybe mm -hmm. if I do this, he will make less mistakes. If I do this, if he'll, you know, he, he is going to be so nervous that he will not be able to do his job properly. But if I do it in a certain way, it will be too relaxed. So mm -hmm. we have to have this balance of the, if I may, you know, the, 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 the incentives, both uh, uh, negative neg negative incentives as well as positive incentives, right mix. Now, this is a very, very, you know, Matlabi talk that I'm doing. It, you know, it sounds a bit too crude. But I think mm -hmm. this complexity orientation and mm -hmm. not looking at it as purely rational uh, way mm -hmm. comes because of our education in humanities and art. Art is not, we don't know what they, what to expect at the end of the day. I think many artists, they start with something and end up with something else, mm -hmm. which happens in any any kind of writing, for instance. You know, mm -hmm. uh, any, you know, research writing that happens for me. Mm -hmm. We don't know how it will emerge. So this staying this uncertainty and uh, moving into the nature with, uh, uh, you know, alternative thinking and not really seeing things as opposition is, is, mm -hmm. is the activity of art. Art tells us why we are doing things. Mm -hmm. Art makes us humble. Art, mm -hmm. art would make us actually move with nature in a better way. We will not talk about exploitation of the nature. Mm -hmm. You know, so this whole um, industrial enterprise of the 19th century was full of words which said, okay, we have to exploit nature. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to, you know, extract. You know, these are very strong, actually violent terms. Mm -hmm. Today, people are realizing this. So we went on that path for 70 years. So we have very, very decent people, very nice, dignified people. But in a public sphere, they act so, you know, irresponsibly. Maybe mm -hmm. they're responsible to the system, but they're irresponsible to the genuine stakeholders. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think so that that gets related to this idea that you just mentioned. You mentioned about uh, what was the question again? I mean, uh, uh, the Serum Institute of India. Serum Institute. Yeah. So what? Yeah, that's a very important thing because we are so according to me, because we are so compartmentalized. We are not able to create a system whereby different functional people can come together and, and do the job and have a, have the experience of dealing with complexity. Mm -hmm. That's why I say organization and inter-organization system. Mm -hmm. you know, the regulators, for instance, are supposed to get feedback from us. From the, mm -hmm. the, and similarly, I'm supposed to get feedback from my students. Mm -hmm. 
if I look very carefully and but if I just say no, 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 how can I get this? And you know, no, this is not representative. Yeah, it's over a period of time we can perfect, you know, almost get, you know, scientific uh, uh, accuracy. If not hundred percent, but eighty percent accuracy, we can say this is the mode of the class. I need to change. Mm-hmm. So this this feedback mechanism, which can only happen if you become if you go beyond rationality. Rationality is the first step. Mm-hmm. If two plus two is four, yes. But at some point, we should say two plus two is five, mm-hmm. and it has that symbolic, symbiotic sense about it, and mm-hmm. that has to be internalized in the heart. Mm-hmm. That requires. A system where nobody will at that time say no, 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 no. Two plus two is four. No, 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 no. Kind of a thing happens when we are so bound with our own understanding of rational. Everybody understands two plus two is four. So the symbolic language, the poetry that is involved, even among the scientists, is being lost. I feel that is a problem. So when they do things and when they come with this, uh, you know, uh, amazing ways to marshal the different energies. Um, then we get, you know, we get too impressed. Naturally, we get impressed because we are not doing it. We are islands of excellence. I've got so many such examples, but then you know, how, how can we, you know, like for instance, if somebody were to come to me from outside and say, "Hey, listen, you are a management professor, and uh, uh, how how do I do this?" Hmm. Typically in India, with due respects to all my colleagues everywhere, you know, they will say, "This guy is teasing me." अभी क्या करना है यार हम क्लास में जाके पढ़ाते हैं व्हाट एम आई सपोज्ड टू डू बट इफ यू आर ट्रूली साइंटिफिक इफ यू आर ट्रूली हैप्पी विद आवर इंस्टीट्यूशंस एंड आवर सेल्फ वी विल से ओह दैट्स अ वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एग्जांपल लेट मी टॉक थिंक अबाउट इट ओके आई नेवर थॉट अबाउट इट इन माय क्लासरूम आई नेवर बट लेट मी ओके आई एम नॉट एबल टू डू दिस होल थिंग लेट मी थ्रो दिस टू माय स्टूडेंट्स वी विल हैव अ यू नो काइंड ऑफ अ interaction with our students uh, you know brainstorming as we say we'll have a brainstorm we'll come to a solution mm-hmm. and i'll tell my hey guys mm-hmm. look at this here is somebody who trusts us so much okay he he respects knowledge mm-hmm. he's come here and he wants to solve a problem i'm you know i think it's a fantastic problem i think you guys can help me solve the problem the whole mm-hmm. thing becomes different now this requires mm-hmm. according to me a sense of the humanities a sense mm-hmm. of saying that i don't know many things nature is so mm-hmm. complex everything is so complex and mm-hmm. i must you know i have the humility to accept it this way i will grow mm-hmm. so i feel serum and all this is happening because the westerners have perfected the i mean to a great extent they have mm-hmm. perfected the art of collective action they talk about competition but there's mm-hmm. tremendous amount of cooperation that's why colonization succeeded you know the dutch and the british fought with each other but among the british they were they knew exactly what is to be done mm-hmm. in terms of cooperating with each other we don't understand that so we took their competition but they didn't they didn't take while we have a substrate of you know harmonious mm-hmm. life nature mm-hmm. is our friend other individuals are our friend all this we forget in our public life mm-hmm. so so you know i i think this is what i think it's a very very interesting example we have brought what oxford university is doing we can do but we need to change the attitudes attitude exactly our our people you to say okay. i'm here to you know intellectually wrestle with this challenge not okay. because i am an intellectual or anything but because that's my job okay. uh, and wrestle with this and i want to get ideas from people and i want to ideas from nature wow, wow. so mm-hmm. that the sense of optimism mm-hmm. of knowledge delivering us whether it's right or wrong has to be there among the academics it's not there in this country it's about elitism when nep came with due respect let me say this i i i had wonderful friends in iits and i but many people were opposing this because they said you think these universities will be able to do it mm-hmm. okay and and okay. no <laughs> you know yeah so mm-hmm. see this elitism and all this so everybody is helpless in our country mm-hmm. people who are provided money they are also helpless because they find you know the borders are so rigidly bound so you can't go out breathe and you know have a cup of chai with you know mm-hmm. so something like that is happening in our country so bureaucrats are it's wonderful people but they are also tied down by their own pretenses academics are also tied down by their pretenses students also pretend so you ask a student do whatever you want just give me a damn nice paper i tell you they are damn good 
<laughs> we give too many instructions. I don't give my students anymore great instructions. I tell you, come and come back to me. Then we'll discuss. So that mm -hmm. feedback, may mm -hmm. have most. So we should not, you know, this, uh, you know, sample questions, model question paper. Then you have a supplementary exam. Then you have a uh, challenge evaluation. All this is spoiling us, you know, mm -hmm. the entire system because we are not we are not really thinking about the, the human potential. Uh, to, so I mean, right now I think. The, 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 there's a demand by technology to come together in very, very interesting and non, you know, centralized, decentered, non-hierarchical, situational leadership, lead from the back, trusteeship. All these things are even much more demanded by technology. Everybody has content information. Google is, you know, but then what is it that we can provide? So I think your example is very, very interesting. We don't need this. But they, they have perfected the art of inter-organizational uh, systems. Mm -hmm. uh, organizational and inter-organizational systems, like metrics uh, type of mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, organizations. And very, very uh, complexity-oriented. Uh, you know, complexity has to be met with complexity. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's what language is. You know, there's a difference between look, glance, uh, peer. Everything is using the eyes. But the bhava is different from within. So, so I think it's very important for us to learn this uh, new ways of dealing with this. And it's not really learning. It's about unlearning. Yeah. Because we know how to deal with nature. So we talk to people without so-called education. They're so very tuned to that great you know, mm -hmm. change in nature. And I really mean it. You know, I have some wonderful mm -hmm. students from rural areas mm -hmm. whom I really respect and love. Mm -hmm. So we have some examples like uh, ISRO yeah. and uh, DRDO. Yes. They are excellent examples uh, and uh, internationally acclaimed institutions that we know. That's but right. uh, the knowledge gained by them yeah. uh, is unlimited to a certain segment of uh, uh, people or uh, called uh, high class people, not That's into right. the um, uh, village. Uh, I yes. have a different story uh, to tell you. It's about, uh, yes. um, please, please. Uh, yeah. I once read that sto story long before. It's about a small boy from a village. He wanted to study um, a, a, a lot, but his school is uh, too far uh, from away from his village, and his parents uh, uh, have any uh, financial sources to support him. But he right. wanted to study, and uh, they uh, supported him by all of their means. Yeah. And he started uh, going to school. But after completing his uh, 10th and 11th, uh, he, he really wanted to study furthermore, but uh, yeah. uh, the, the family can't afford him. So he came back to his village and ended up in a job like a delivery boy. So that same job, without any um, uh, study, his village colleagues um, and neighbors are doing that job. So what, what's um, so, uh, in spite of so much of investment, yeah. it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to go for higher education. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's very true. I mean, See, we have a lot of inequalities. Yes. In the in the uh, yes. Correct. Education. Education is a good thing. Exactly. Uh, the Correct. Yeah. 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 Amle Valar Terrier segment Alagal Vetu Nokum Bold, Valar Villier Sadaman, Kutigalum, Inganiana, Jew of Sanik, Osar Chabu. Other India addressing under Villier Vishim at home. Any get on the Chella E. Inganta Kiringal Vadan and the Chella Namada abilities and Namada aptitudum, nepetitum, Yather Tarathelum. Inquiry Chian Samikinia. Other Uru Uru career development known to Uru Corsa, a Lengila, you know, how to choose your career known to do Buku Aichito, other Padigambatle. 
അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ശരിക്കും ചെയ്യേണ്ട എന്താ വെച്ചാല് എല്ലാ ജോലികളും ഡിഗ്നിറ്റി ഓഫ് ലേബർ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞത് ഭയങ്കര ഒരു കാര്യല്ലേ എല്ലാ ജോലികളും ഡിഗ്നിറ്റി ഉണ്ട് അതില് നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യാണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ മെനി പീപ്പിൾ ഈ കുട്ടി മേ ബി ഹാഡ് ദ ആപ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ടു ബിക്കം എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് എഞ്ചിനീയർ വേറെ കൊറേ പേര് എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് പാസ് ആയിട്ട് ഒന്നും ചെയ്യാതിരിക്കുന്നത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ദ ജസ്റ്റ് ഗോ ടു ദ ഓഫീസ് ആൻഡ് ഗെറ്റ് സംതിങ് ആൻഡ് ഡൺ ആൻഡ് അപ്പൊ ആ അങ്ങനത്തെ ആൾക്കാർ ദ ഹാവ് ടു ഹാവ് മേക്ക് പ്ലേസ് ഫോർ സച്ച് പീപ്പിൾ അത് ചെയ്യണമെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ വലിയൊരു ഐ ഡോ നോ ഹൗ വെദർ വി കെൻ ഡു ദാറ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ടേക്ക് ജനറേഷൻസ് ടു ഡു ദാറ്റ് അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഒന്നാമത് മറ്റുള്ളവരെ എന്ത് ചെയ്യാണെങ്കിലും അതൊരു ഉപജീവന മാർഗം അത് ഒരു ഇഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് റിയലി ഓണസ്റ്റ് job i think we should really respect and i don't i i'm i'm saying this with deep sense of understanding and you know when you don't there are some karma karma yogis and you have a but a general and i put a a gardener and that i think you have bhayankara respect i see him as a quintessential karma yogi mm-hmm. you know gardener aba adu mathram pora nammal we have to we have to also provide them with whatever incentives we can give kindness as well as in in you know monetarily appo enikku thonnunnathu there is too much of difference for instance in in, in remuneration you know mm-hmm. the, 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 one of the reasons why america is going down is too much of this you know tremendous mm-hmm. you know many 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 orders of magnitude uh, salary differences uh, so because it perpetuates right itself you know it's 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 so somewhere we should say that our in society our uh, fun comes not just by money it could be by the freedom that a academic enjoys mm-hmm. uh, similarly it's in some cases may be power so depending upon the aptitude of the person we have to so i think uh, we need to have a lot of things done i think i think we we have we have certain amount of resources and with this it and so on such boys uh, if they get really good mentors so faculty have to become great mentors Mm-hmm. and they have to infuse them to take you know if if such a boy takes say about 50 credit hours of classes mm-hmm. uh, which is the best in the world which will not cost him more than a you know 50000 rupees uh, mm-hmm. i i think we should sponsor such kids uh, individually mm-hmm. and and we are a, we are a great nation uh, in terms of philanthropy we mm-hmm. don't realize it so the the uh, one professor from university of pennsylvania Uh, mm-hmm. the, the social systems uh, uh, she gave me a book her own written book written by um, she she's originally from india but you know moved to united states long now they say that uh, it's co-authored with you know two other uh, academics what they say is uh, you know none of the things that we do come in the books of account so it will appear that we are not philanthropists mm-hmm. but we do a lot of work for our parents mm-hmm. we do a lot of work for our children we do a lot of work for you know various things none of them come in the books i've come so idu velluru decolonization is a great you know it's a great thing part of that is also respecting such people and you know they can find sponsors i'm sure if we have the real platform there's so many people are willing to contribute but right now it's all a lack of uh, you know trust according to me i i i personally have tried it you know Uh, many places a, which is an organization where you know it's going to go to the right person it's very okay. difficult to find them so mm-hmm. i think we have enough good sense people with good sense we have to marshal it and this mm-hmm. marshaling requires uh, giving up a lot of our pet ideas about control mm-hmm. uh, and, and hierarchy and you know mm-hmm. serving when you don't mean serving when you mm-hmm. say sir we should really mean it you know this is wise man elderly man and you know wow and we of course we have we 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 have a tradition of recognizing youngsters also today we find a lot of youngsters are getting recognized you know? mm-hmm. so i think uh, yeah so this is uh, i think yeah if, if we, we should identify such people at a very very micro level at a village micro. level and support them so i think government can come with tremendous amount of you know uh, uh, legis- new legislation which can support mm-hmm. these local endeavors I mean mm-hmm. FPO the farmer producer organization is a very interesting piece of legislation which has come out recently exactly mm-hmm. yeah. so like that we have to identify you know great local initiatives when people will be very very you know. so we have to bring out the best in people rather than say they need to be controlled mm-hmm. you know there's something called incarceration rate you know that is a number of people in the uh, in the jail uh, mm-hmm. 
ഒരു ലക്ഷം ആൾക്കാർ എത്ര ആൾക്കാരാണ് ജയിലിൽ നമ്മുടെ ഇവിടെ ഞാൻ ലാസ്റ്റ് നോക്കിയപ്പം ആ നമ്പർ തേർട്ടി ടു ഫോർട്ടി the same corresponding number that is about 20 30 people for 100000 people are in the jail mm-hmm. but the corresponding number in the west in mm-hmm. united states and i respect united states i i found some fantastic academics you know, university is a place where you know the mm-hmm. color doesn't matter you go as an indian oh, wow, you know you, you you won't be pronouncing things rightly but still they listen to you it's an amazing mm-hmm. place but the same incarceration rate in the united states i think is touching almost 1000 it used mm. to be about 700 800 per thousand so one in uh, one in uh, 100 people almost mm. Mm. i don't want to say bad thing because it's humanity i mean it's it's they are not different from us the indian thinking is really you know they and us are not different so what i'm saying is we have a lot of things good things whether it's philanthropy or whether it is incarceration rates or mm. absolutely un- so called uneducated people like you know dabawalas of bombay having mm-hmm. six sigma uh, mm-hmm. you know uh, quality amazing i i i've benefited by them i never looked at them with the same bhava as i do today mm-hmm. because i didn't know this these guys were so heroic by 11 11:30 at 12:30 you have your lunch beautiful mm-hmm. nice hot lunch which probably is prepared only about half a, one hour before that you know available mm-hmm. to you so these things have to be really celebrated and we have mm-hmm. to really celebrate uh, all, you know all the good things that are going on in this country you know, the heroic efforts by so many mm-hmm. people you know, agriculturists mm-hmm. we have to bring all of them together and we say we, we need different measures okay. why should we have the same measures which are causing inequalities mm-hmm. so this is a very great i mean so we can have circular economy we could have biomimicry we could have you know mm-hmm. small plots of land uh, it doesn't matter this uh, mm. you know we still can have great uh, things coming out of uh, you know, small holdings i was reading something about japan and uh, mm. uh, you know even in india now the fukuoka that you know that the natural mm. Uh, mm. so i think we need to have all these different things coming together and create our own measures in mm. in, in, a, in a very confident unabashed fashion we should mm. come with our own measures mm-hmm. and uh, we, we i think we will find uh, you know that will mm. adjust to do things differently which will create you know happiness uh, overall happiness uh, thing no hmm. okay so uh, about macro organization level nammude uh, yeah. fpo model le oru vidyabhyasa sthavam aanengil namukku engane ee macro organization samvidhanathile namukku indiyil oru velliyoru maatham kondu varan sadhikkum ennalladhu namukku cheriya unit kal thodangam അതിനു പുറമെ മൈക്രോ ഓർഗനൈസേഷൻ ലെവലിൽ നമുക്ക് എങ്ങനെ ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഒരു ഈ കേസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന കുട്ടിയെ പോലുള്ള നിരവധി പേരുണ്ട് വില്ലേജിൽ നമുക്ക് എങ്ങനെ അവരുടെ ജീവിത നിലവാരം വർദ്ധിപ്പിച്ചു കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ അവർക്ക് ആ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷന്റെ എക്സ്പെൻസ് അവർക്ക് മീറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ സാധിക്കുന്നില്ലാന്ന് അവരുടെ ഒരു ആക്സസ് ഓഫ് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ മാത്രമല്ല എക്സ്പെൻസ് ആണ് ജീവിക്കാൻ അവർക്ക് സാധിക്കുന്നില്ല പിന്നെ എങ്ങനെ വിദ്യാഭ്യാസം സെക്രട്ടറിയായി മാറുന്നു അതിന് ഒരു സൊല്യൂഷൻ ഉണ്ടാവണമെങ്കിൽ അവരുടെ ജീവിത നിലവാരം വർദ്ധിപ്പിച്ചേ പറ്റും അതെ അപ്പൊ അതിന് നമ്മൾക്ക് നിരവധി മാർഗങ്ങളുണ്ട് എഫ് പി ഒ മോഡലിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എഫ് പി ഒ ആയി ഇന്റർലിങ്ക് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടുള്ള ഒരു വിദ്യാഭ്യാസ രീതി വെരി കോംപ്ലക്സ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഐ ഡോ തിങ്ക് ഐ ഹാവ് ദ ഫൈനൽ സൊല്യൂഷൻ ബട്ട് ഐ തിങ്ക് നമ്മുടെ ഇവിടെ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ടു ഒപ്പോസിങ് ഐഡിയാസ് ഓഫ് ഓണർഷിപ്പ് of educational institution i think you are referring to that you know we had that discussion when i was saying that we could have some model where students are also committed to the institution in a more organic way mm. so we have to look at some interesting new models of uh, uh, university take for yes, instance kerala exactly. kerala thile nan oru deep aid the research cheyittillengilum i have observed that during the 60s a lot of new educational institutions came in kerala during the 60s 1960s you know there, there was there were a lot of arts and science colleges came up and uh, that created a huge uh, uh, impact uh, in creating you know ba bsc bcom especially you know arts uh, students because setting up a laboratory and all required a certain amount of money and so on so i've seen this happening uh, all over kerala i was i was very young at that time but later when i study but then uh, then came a, a, a situation where a lot of these uh, 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 parallel colleges mm-hmm. you know parallel because of uh, again regulatory 
it, 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 it's not so much, uh, you know, designed, it's almost by default, according to me, because of paralysis happening, our <laughs> people are extremely clever people. We come up with these devices. So we have the parallel college. So now what has happened is, okay, there, there is uh, IIT and, you know, IM and so on. But then how many, how many islands of uh, excellence exist? Uh, <laughs> but I think students are extremely smart. <laughs> They're extremely smart. I was in Toronto the other day. I mean, this is the, this is the, our country, you know. They spoke so nicely. Even our students, I mean, I mean, all of students. So what I'm trying to say, we have to come up with, you know, we have to go out of this binary government versus private. You know, right now, the, 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 the narrative is about uh, either it is publicly owned or privately owned. Okay. Uh, and I think I don't think Kerala will allow private education. There have been so many commissions I've heard about. It, you know, it may not happen. Maybe, maybe that's not the right model for Kerala. I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is, at, at the end of the day, it's about transparency. Hmm. And it's about, you know, engagement. So we must create a system which is really brutally transparent, mm -hmm. where at any point in time, you know, the, 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 the macro figures are available to anybody, mm -hmm. at, at least all the stakeholders, including students. They should know what it costs to do education. Mm -hmm. But they want, you know, a typical an MBA guy who goes out and gets such fantastic salary. Now, mm -hmm. they should know that academics are, you know, they may be probably drawing less than them. But they're doing it for the freedom that they have. You know, I can have Karl Marx on my one side. I can have Adam Smith on one, my side. And, you know, I, I can't be, you know, I can't tell them exactly what to do in the industry. I'll say all the industry is doing, I was in the industry for 10 years, is, is probably wrong. That doesn't mean that they're wrong in, in, a, you know, in a situational sense. You know, they are dealing with urgent situations. But it's for me to be critical without being, you know, um, what should I say, without being... Uh, uh, cynical about it. No. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that is the whole idea of an academic to be critical. But when I'm hmm. critiquing, I'm saying I'm also part of the system. Hmm. Not being able to devise anything better. So, what can hmm. we do something better? That kind of a thing. So, what I'm saying is, so this binary between private and public has to be overcome, according to me, which can be done through some kind of legislation like FPO, especially for states like Kerala. And this is a concurrent list. Uh, education is a concurrent list. So in yeah. higher education, I think it is possible to create some new legislation if mm. the best brains go into this. Because cooperation is fundamental to the uh, Indian psycho, Indian mm. psyche, sorry, Indian mm. psyche. That we should not forget. Mm. We are very, very concerned about what the neighbor thinks about us. Mm. Right? We have proved in two areas, we have proved the, 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 the power of cooperation. One is uh, uh, self-help groups. Mm. And the other is, according to me, FPO. The good mm. FPOs that are going to emerge, it's just starting. Mm. I mean, we, we talked about this at one point again. So I've seen some really fantastic, uh, heroic effort being done, and I hope they do succeed. So FPO is, is, is a game changer. Mm. And I think self-help group is, has been prone to be game changer in many places. I was talking to somebody this morning, actually, somebody from OP General University. She was saying how in Bihar, uh, the self-help groups are, you know, emerging as to be the dominant organizational model for achieving, you know, equity and, you know, getting uh, things done. Uh, it's complete breakdown of the, you know, traditional uh, government department. We know it. Uh, you, know, we don't know it is, uh, but, but, you know, Bihar is a very interesting case. I think, you know, there are amazing people there. Mm. You know, in terms of intelligence, you know, local intelligence, but not able to marshal these things together. That's because we didn't give that importance. We we had this patronizing attitude that government can solve all problems for you. And that was convenient uh, from a political perspective also. So those things have to change. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I uh, so, so, so to answer your question, I think it is about, uh, I think the governance from a, from a public perspective uh, is really about letting people come together and solve their problems hmm. without seeing them as a threat. And That's while doing that, yeah, th while doing that, they have to be careful because there is something called bonding social capital and bridging social capital. You know, sociology, I studied a little bit about this. So within them, if they have become too strong, they will see outsiders as inimical. So that is bridging, you know, between groups within this oh. bonding. So this, hmm. this has to be balanced. So hmm. this balancing of bonding and, uh, uh, and bridging is 
what the government can do because they have the power to do that but okay. if two people are happily having a good time and they're not creating a problem for anybody and they're enjoying themselves they're learning they're discovering new things leave them alone let them let them you know give them the long leash and they will come back to us and say that wow we can do so much for you guys at that time you know so hmm. that is not happening if two people are talking you think they are ganging up against me hmm. you know i think we need to and i'm just i'm just kind of you know painting a very broad brush but i think this these things are you know psychological issues hmm. are very important and our perception of how things are is very important framing is very very important no? hmm. so i think we can solve the problem if we can have for instance a cooperative kind of uh, mechanism where hmm. the students have a stake faculty have a stake and money is not the issue hmm. money is not the issue hmm. it is about the freedom that they can have and uh, you know they can go out and uh, you know do things they can do their own gardening they can do this and i mean if it's an agricultural kind of university and hmm. they share the, the 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 benefits and you know so i think ultimately you know i think we are at, a, at least uh, the, the well you know well provided in our society are able to look at money uh, mm -hmm. to, in a different way today i think i hope that i'm true um, but most of the time we are compulsive we are saying you know neighbors and we you know what is that uh, you know uh, you know there are some ads that talk about you know so we are promoting mm -hmm. a lot of jealousy uh, in mm -hmm. the marketing ways you need to you need to look at these very carefully and uh, look at the damage we are doing uh, in, in, in trying to you know a no. bigger and bigger car bigger you know something something but so yeah so so ultimately we have to come back to the you know individuation as mm -hmm. jung carl jung talks about individuation what is it that i want keralathileyum oru vakshe oru paridhi vare indiyile valare veliya saadhyathagalana innathe aagola thalathile sambhav vikasangal nammalku munnotu vekkunnathu visheshum indo pacificil vannu cheruna chila maatrangal prakatamaya maatrangal നമുക്ക് ഇന്ത്യയിൽ നിന്ന് വളരെ വലിയ സാധ്യത തുറന്നു കാണിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ഇന്ത്യ വിട്ട് ഇന്ത്യ വിട്ടും ഇന്ത്യക്ക് ഇന്ത്യയോട് ചേർന്ന് നിൽക്കുന്ന രാഷ്ട്രങ്ങളും കോളനൈസേഷൻ കാലഘട്ടത്തിൽ നിന്ന് വിട്ട് നിന്ന് വിട്ടു നിന്ന യൂറോപ്യൻ രാജ്യങ്ങൾ ആ നാടുകളിൽ നിന്ന് പാടെ മാറിയെങ്കിൽ പോലും ഇവിടെയുള്ള ചില ദ്വീപ് സമൂഹങ്ങൾ ഇപ്പോഴും അവരുടെ കൈവശം വെച്ചിരുന്നത് ഒരു സുദീർഘമായ വീക്ഷണത്തിന്റെ ഭാഗമായി നമുക്ക് കരുതാം വിശേഷ ഡിഗോക്രേഷ്യ പോലുള്ള ദ്വീപുകൾ ദ്വീപുകളുണ്ട് അമേരിക്കയുടെ കയ്യിൽ ഇംഗ്ലണ്ടിൽ നിന്നും മറ്റു രാഷ്ട്രങ്ങൾക്കും അവിടെ ദ്വീപ് സമൂഹങ്ങളുണ്ട് ഇന്ന് ഏറ്റവും അധികം സാധ്യത ഏറിയതും ഏറ്റവും അധികം തർക്കങ്ങൾക്ക് വിധേയമാവുന്നതും ഇന്തോ പസഫിക് റീജിയനിലാണ് ഇന്തോ പസഫിക് റീജിയനിലെ ഒരു സുപ്രധാനമായ പങ്ക് വഹിക്കുന്ന ചില സതേൺ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്സിലെ ഒന്നാണ് കർണാടകയും കേരളവും തമിഴ്നാടും ആന്ധ്രയും എല്ലാം ഈ സംസ്ഥാന ഈ സംസ്ഥാനങ്ങൾ മുന്നോട്ട് വെക്കുന്ന സാധ്യതകൾ ഇന്നും നമ്മുടെ നാട്ടിലെ ജനങ്ങൾ തിരിച്ചറിഞ്ഞിട്ടില്ല എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഒരു യാഥാർത്ഥ്യം എന്നാൽ ഇന്ത്യക്ക് പുറത്ത് ഇന്ത്യയിലെ തന്നെ വളരെ വിദഗ്ധരായിട്ടുള്ള മലയാളികൾ ഉൾപ്പെടെയുള്ള ആളുകൾ ജോലി ചെയ്യുകയും ഉന്നതമായ സ്ഥലങ്ങൾ സ്ഥാനമാനങ്ങൾ കച്ചവട സ്ഥാപനങ്ങൾ തുടങ്ങി സമൃദ്ധമായി പല നിലയിലും ഉയർന്ന നിലയിലും ഇന്റലക്ച്വലായും മുന്നോട്ട് പോകുന്ന ആളുകൾ അവരുടെ ആ കോൺട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ ഇന്ത്യയെ മുന്നോട്ട് വെക്കുന്ന മുന്നോട്ട് മുന്നോട്ട് കൊണ്ടുപോകേണ്ടത് എപ്രകാരമാണെന്നുള്ളതിനെ കുറിച്ച് ഒരു പൊതുവേദി ഒരു ഒരു പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോമിന് ക്രിയേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാണ് സർക്കാലം എന്ന പദ്ധതി കൊണ്ട് യഥാർത്ഥത്തിൽ ഉദ്ദേശിച്ചിരുന്നത് ഈ പദ്ധതി ഒരു പ്രകടമായും വിദഗ്ധരുടെ ഒരു പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോമായി മാറ്റിയെടുക്കുകയും മുമ്പ് എൻ്റെ ഒരു സുഹൃത്ത് പറഞ്ഞതുപോലെ ഒരു കളക്റ്റീവ് കോമൺസ് എന്ന നിലയിലേക്ക് ഇതിന് രൂപപ്പെടുത്തിയെടുക്കുകയും വാർത്തെടുക്കുകയുമായിരുന്നു ഈ പദ്ധതി കൊണ്ട് ലക്ഷ്യം വെക്കുന്നത് ഈ പദ്ധതിയിലൂടെ ഒരു പക്ഷെ അപൂർവം എന്ന് കരുതാവുന്ന പദ്ധതികൾ നിരവധി പദ്ധതികൾക്ക് രൂപം കൊടുക്കുവാനും അത് സർക്കാർ തലത്തിൽ തന്നെ നമുക്കത് നേടിയെടുക്കുവാനും അതുവഴി ഈ നാടിന്റെ വികസനത്തിന് പുതിയൊരു ദിശാബോധം നമുക്ക് നൽകാൻ അതുവഴി ചിലപ്പോൾ സാധിച്ചേക്കാം അങ്ങനെ ഒരു നല്ലൊരു ഉദ്ദേശത്തില് നല്ല മനുഷ്യരായുള്ള ആളുകളുടെ നന്മയെ കരുതുന്ന ആളുകളുടെ സമാധാനം കാംക്ഷിക്കുന്ന ആളുകളുടെ ഒരു കൂട്ടായ്മയായി നമുക്ക് ഈ ശരക്കാലം എന്ന പരിപാടികളിലൂടെ ഈ കൂട്ടായ്മകളിലൂടെ നമുക്ക് മുന്നോട്ട് കൊണ്ടുപോകാൻ സാധിച്ചെന്ന് വരാം അത്തരമൊരു പദ്ധതിയുടെ പ്രാരംഭ എന്ന നിലയിൽ നമ്മുടെ ഇന്നത്തെ ഈ ഈ ചർച്ചകൾ വളരെ ശരിയായ ദിശയിലും വളരെ ആകാംക്ഷപരമായും ആശ്വാസപരമായും നമുക്ക് ഇന്ന് കൊണ്ടു ചെന്നെത്താൻ സാധിച്ചു ഇന്നത്തെ ചർച്ചയിൽ നമ്മുടെ അതിഥിയായിത്തിരിക്കുന്നത് ഡോക്ടർ കെ ശങ്കരൻ അദ്ദേഹം വളരെയധികം വൈദഗ്ധ്യമുള്ള ഒരു മേഖലയിൽ നിന്നാണ് വരുന്നത് 
നിരവധി രാഷ്ട്രങ്ങളിൽ അദ്ദേഹം അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ വൈദേഹ്യം തെളിയിക്കുകയും അദ്ദേഹം ഇന്ന് ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഒരു പ്രമുഖ സ്ഥാപനത്തിന്റെ മേധാവിയായി ചുമതലയേറ്റ് പ്രവർത്തിച്ചു വരികയാണ് അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ കാഴ്ചപ്പാട് നമ്മൾ ഈ സമയം അത്രയും പങ്കുവെച്ചതിൽ നിന്ന് പുതിയൊരു ദിശാബോധമുള്ള ഒരു വിദ്യാഭ്യാസ സ്ഥാപനത്തിനും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വിദ്യാഭ്യാസ പ്രക്രിയയും സ്ഥാപനം എന്നതിനേക്കാളും ഉപരി ഒരു പ്രക്രിയ സംസാരിച്ചതിൽ നിന്ന് നമ്മൾക്ക് അദ്ദേഹത്തിൽ നിന്ന് നമുക്ക് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ സാധിച്ചത് ഒരു പ്രക്രിയ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു പദമായിരിക്കും കുറച്ചുകൂടി ആപ്റ്റ് ആവുന്നത് ഒരു സ്ഥാപനം എന്ന് വിളിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അത് വളരെയധികം സൂക്ഷിച്ച ഒരു ഒരു സാഹചര്യമായിരിക്കും പകരം അതൊരു പ്രക്രിയയായി മാറുമ്പോൾ അത് വളരെയധികം വികസിതമായുള്ള ഒരു കാഴ്ചപ്പാട് ഒരു 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 ദിശാബോധം നൽകുന്ന ഒരു അടിത്തറ ശക്തിയാകുന്ന ഒരു കാഴ്ചപ്പാടായി നമ്മൾ അതിനെ മാറ്റിയെടുക്കാൻ സാധിക്കും ഈ കാഴ്ചപ്പാടിൽ ഒരു പുതിയൊരു ഓപ്ഷൻ അതിന്റെ പ്രവർത്തന രീതി എപ്രകാരം കൊണ്ടു പോകണം എന്നതിനെ കുറിച്ച് ചിന്തിച്ചു വരുമ്പോൾ അത് സ്വകാര്യ മേഖല നമുക്കുണ്ട് സർക്കാർ മേഖല നമുക്കുണ്ട് ഇതിൽ നിന്നൊക്കെ വ്യത്യസ്തമായി ഒരു പുതിയൊരു ഒരു ഒരു സാ ഒരു സാധ്യതയ്ക്കാണ് അദ്ദേഹം വെളിച്ചം വീശിയിരിക്കുന്നത് ആ സാധ്യത എങ്ങനെയാണെന്ന് അദ്ദേഹത്തിൽ നിന്ന് തന്നെ നമുക്ക്